This is a video for AQA Further Pure Mathematics, this complex numbers section 2.1 in which we introduce the Argan diagram and look at addition and subtraction of numbers. Well, you may not have thought about multiplication by negative 1 geometrically before, however we can do it and we can consider the multiplication by negative 1 as being a rotation about the origin. In fact, the rotation required is 180 degrees, so that, we, that the um, vector that you see there, pointing along the real axis to 1, turns so that it then points to negative 1. So if we can multiply by negative 1, we might think then, well, okay, what is the implication of multiplying by the square root of negative 1, i.e. i? And if it's a rotation of 180 degrees for negative 1, then the square root of that we could think about as probably being a rotation by 90 degrees. So that we then have a, a, a new axis which is the imaginary axis and we, we, we call this the complex plane or an argon diagram. So the, the horizontal axis has got the real numbers on it and the vertical axis is called the imaginary axis and there we have got the imaginary part of numbers. So we've now got a two-dimensional plane represent that we, we can represent complex numbers on. So for example the number z which is 3 plus 4i can be represented by the um, point on the argon diagram at the coordinate 3, 4 Alternatively, we can think about it as being the line from the origin to that point. So rather like a vector, a position vector of a point would be. Well, now we can think about what happens if we've got two complex numbers and we're going to add them together. So if we've got z1 is 2 plus 5i, we can represent that by the vector from the origin to the point 2, 5. And 5 plus i, likewise, to the point 5, 1. Now when we add these together, so it's a, a straightforward addition, as you well know, we get the number 7 plus 6 i. And how can we represent that on the Argon diagram? Well, if we think where 7 plus 6 i is, that's the result that we want. And then we can see that we can treat this like vector addition. So that Z2 moves to a, a, a parallel point. So we now have Z1 and then tip to tail Z2 added onto that to produce the result Z1 plus Z2. So addition of complex numbers can be considered in the same way as vector addition. Well now let's consider what happens if we've got uh, subtraction of numbers. Here we've got the numbers Z1 and Z2. What happens if we try and subtra subtract Z1 from Z2? Well obviously then we get Z2 minus Z1 is 7 plus 6i and minus 2 plus 5i giving us a result which is 5 for the real part and then 6i minus 5i gives us plus i. So the result is at 5, 1 which is at this point here and the vector representing that in here this is going to be the vector for z2 minus z1. Well how do we get that result? Well if we look at the vector which is negative of z1 we can see that z2 plus negative z1 gives us that result which is z2 minus z1. So we consider subtraction of negative numbers z2 minus Z1 as being the same as Z2 plus the negative of Z1 and the negative vector is in the opposite direction um, at exactly the same length. So 
So that's the end of this video which looked at the addition and subtraction and in the next video 2.2 we'll look at rotations and multiplication by I.